Boudoir photography is very different than other types of photography in so many ways, not just because of the judgment from your family and friends. Today what I want to talk about is how boudoir photography is different from other types of photography. Hey boudoir photographers, are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there, and welcome back to the Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography podcast. Now, as a boudoir photographer, I want to say I love, 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 love this industry, but it does come with a little bit of a stigma behind it, you know? So for example, when I built my business, I was really judged. I remember one friend saying to me, like, you're not going to do this forever, right? This isn't your long-term business plan. Actually, thank you very much, it is. It's safe to say I'm no longer friends with this particular person. My family thought it was weird and definitely judged me at first until they started seeing the money coming in. And then they saw that I was able to replace my nine to five and have so much more freedom in my life. That was when they first started seeing why I put so much time and effort into growing this business and my artistry, even if they thought that it was just a little bit of a weird hobby at first. As annoyed as I was to be judged by my family and friends, I do want to say that I understand. The genre is a little bit more risque than what you might expect from a small town girl who grew up on a Midwestern farm. Anyway, boudoir photography is very different than any other type of photography in many ways and not just because of the judgment of your family and friends. That story is relevant for today's topic though because this is something most boudoir photographers are definitely going to have to deal with. Today what I want to talk about is how boudoir photography is different from other types of photography. So let's dive in. The first way it differs from other styles is the lighting. Most boudoir photographers, they photograph sessions indoors with the occasional outdoor boudoir photography session. And what's great about indoor photography is you have a lot more control over the lighting. If it rains, if it sleets, snows, if it's overcast, you still can photograph that session. The weather, it really doesn't matter. And we can photograph sessions even if it's really cold. I mean, to a point, of course, if the roads are bad, I mean, we're not going to be able to photograph the session because either you or the client may not be able to make it to your studio. At least if you're from the areas that don't know how to handle bad road conditions, my area is definitely one of those. An inch of snow can cause 12-hour delays and road closures. I've seen it happen in St. Louis. They closed down Interstate 70 with people actually on the highway. Some of my clients were stuck on the interstate for 12 straight hours. I think that was like in 2017. It was wild. Anyway, got a little bit of sidetracked there. Boudoir is typically photographed indoors, so we have more control over how light hits the client. That means you have to understand lighting and what's the most flattering type of light on a woman's body. I go into more detail about this in my Boudoir Studio Accelerator program or Six Figure Simplified, but let me talk a little bit about types of lighting. So broad light is when shadows are on the body are furthest from the camera. Short light is when the shadows on the body are closest to the camera. And then there's flat light, and that's when there are no shadows. Basically, the face and the body are evenly lit. To me, short light is the most flattering type of light for a boudoir photographer. It creates more dimension in the photos, and it's just all around a more flattering light. If your studio has great light, you're going to be able to create beautiful art with beautiful and natural light. Some areas of the country are more overcast during certain times of the year than others like Oregon and Washington. And I mean, St. Louis doesn't have the greatest light all year long either. That's when you need to know how to add light to the photos so that you can have beautiful light on the client to create those beautiful and flattering photos. Knowing your light is fundamental in creating beautiful boudoir images. The second way boudoir photography is different from other styles is the props in the location. And we talked about this a little bit already, but most boudoir photography sessions are going to be photographed indoors and you need some sort of set in which to photograph that session. It's a lot different than any other type of photography, mostly because of the confidentiality with the location. We need to make sure that your studio or wherever you're photographing is actually private. Whether that means there's tin on the windows or your studio is in your home without neighbors or maybe you're 
or maybe you're one of the top floors of a high rise building in your town. As long as you have privacy, that is the most important thing. You also need to build a studio with sets, meaning that you do need to have some props. For boudoir, that's typically bedroom sets, maybe a couch or two. You can typically move these things around during the session, or if you're like me and you're a little bit lazier, you can have three to four different sets set up at all times. Some photographers like to have air mattresses on the floor that are easy to move. Whatever is best for you and your business is what's best. The thing is, with other types of photography, usually location and having full sets set up aren't really necessary. This is just one of the reasons a boudoir session is one of the more expensive types of photography. It's an expensive genre of photography in general. When you have to have a literal studio in order to photograph sessions or book hotel rooms or Airbnbs, you have to charge premium prices, you know? The third way boudoir photography is different than any other style of photography is the types of clients a boudoir photographer will book. Regardless of the genre you photograph, you need to know your ideal client. But I think it's even more important for boudoir than other genres because your clients need to feel like you're the best photographer for them. They need to feel a connection to you. She needs to feel confident in you. You need to know your ideal client so that you can help her feel those things. That means you need to nail down exactly who she is and speak directly to her. I talk about this a lot, but that's because it is so important. I've heard other educators say that a boudoir photographer's ideal client is any woman, and I don't think that's the case at all. Narrow down who you love working with and start speaking directly to her. The fourth way boudoir photography is different than any other type of photography is posing. Boudoir is different than most types of photography, especially family photography. It's going to be impossible to pose a little two-year-old, so basically you're getting what you get when you're photographing a family. Now, I personally think that you should pose any photo that you take when possible, even those family photos, but the thing is women are coming to the session regardless of their size, with their own issues with their body. Literally every woman will have some issue with her body. Personally, I don't want a single photo taken to me that isn't flattering, whether it's boudoir, engagement sessions, brand photos, wedding photos, whatever. I want to be posed and I don't want to see a photo that isn't flattering at all. Maybe it's a personal issue I have. It probably is. But I know a lot of women have that same issue. And I also think it's more important than ever to pose boudoir photography clients very well. There are so many boudoir photographers out there. And that means that there's a lot of competition. So you need to be the best of the best. When you're the best, you're going to be able to book more clients. You'll have referrals coming in like crazy. And you'll have so many testimonials that clients will be dying to book with you. The fifth way boudoir photography is different from other styles is the importance of your confidence as a photographer. You need to go into your sessions with so much confidence that your clients feel the confidence. They have to be confident that you know what you're doing. I've already said it, but this is such an intimate form of photography. These women are basically naked in front of a complete stranger. They need to trust that you know exactly what you're doing so that you can look and feel confident through the session. Sure, this is important with any type of photography, but just imagine if your boudoir photographer came to the session clueless. Think about it this way. Two types of photography. One is family, one is boudoir. If you said to a family photography client, I'm just going to let you guys interact and move around. I'll get some candid photos. They would be totally fine with that, right? Imagine saying that to a boudoir photography client. I know my clients really well and they would be like, um, how? What do you want me to do exactly? Can you just pose me? Clients want you to come in with confidence and a plan. Hey, I write a newsletter every single week where I cover photography, business, marketing, strategy, industry happenings, client wins and celebrations, and so much more. It is just for you, and you can get on the list right now at rebrand.ly slash TLC newsletter, and I will link that in the show notes as well. The sixth way boudoir photography is different from other styles is in the confidentiality and importance of private galleries. With boudoir, it will always be so much harder to build your portfolio. Whereas with any other type of photography, most clients will sign a release form and let you use their photos anywhere and any way that you want. It's not like that with boudoir. Some clients are going to happily show off their photos, but most clients do this as a gift for their significant other or just want to keep their photos private. And that's totally fine. 
as a boudoir photographer, you need to make sure that your photos are confidential and that you have private galleries for your clients. They need to know that their images are safe with you. I also don't like to request clients let me use their images. I don't want to pressure them into sharing. If I share a client's images, it's because she's given me permission of her own free will. The seventh way boudoir photography differs from other styles is the content you share and how you obtain it. Now, along the lines of that confidentiality and private galleries, unlike with other genres of photography, I can't rely on paying clients to allow me to use their photos in my portfolio or for social media, but a boudoir photographer still does need some content. And that's where content or model session days come in so that we have some way to stay in front of our ideal clients on social media. What I do is hire a model, usually a trade for photos, so that I have content that I can share all year long. This also gives me more control over the content that I get to put out. If you're hiring someone to model for you, then you have control over the images you're creating and you're posting. And that means that you can control what they're wearing and especially if they have any experience, you can e get even better expressions and poses to really take your portfolio to that next level because they've been in front of a camera before. Whereas with other genres of photography, you're just posting your paying clients photos and you're kind of just hoping that some of those are going to be beautiful. Some may not be wearing the exact outfits you'd want to post. So you're just kind of hoping with paying clients photos that you get something that you want to share. The eighth way boudoir photography differs from other styles is where you find the right and most trusted print labs. So to be honest, this is actually pretty similar to any type of photography. I think any professional photography lab is going to be perfectly fine for any type of photography. But because boudoir photographers charge more premium pricing, I do think that we need labs with more luxury albums. So for example, the boudoir album or graphy studio have next level albums that are perfect for your luxury pricing for boudoir photographers. But honestly, any professional lab is going to be just fine. I'm a huge fan of White House Custom Color. It's been my go-to for my entire career. And that's because their customer service and their turnaround time are unreal. The ninth way boudoir photography differs from other styles is the way you book your clients. A wedding photographer has a lot of steps to book a client from wedding day to the engagement session to signing the contract and all of the things in between. A family photographer on location has to book and make sure that they pick the best location for their client and other types of photography have a lot of back and forth between the photographer and the client. Whereas with boudoir, we can totally streamline it. A boudoir client can book their session, sign the contract and pay their invoice all at once. One thing I want to say is that the easier you make it for a client to book, the more likely they are that they actually book. I know for me, the last thing that I want to do is get on a call with someone or have to go back and forth in email or text to book whatever it is that I want to book, like a hair salon. The last thing that I want to do is have to call a hair salon and get put on hold to book an appointment. I also don't want to have to call the same salon and cancel my appointment. So the easier you make things, the better. Now, just to be clear, let's make sure that your clients are not allowed to cancel their sessions without talking to you first. We don't want to make that too easy either, either, because if you make that easy, especially with boudoir, when clients are nervous anyway, they probably will cancel. So just don't make it easy to cancel sessions. But back to booking a session, I want to be able to get online and see when they have an opening to see if it's even worth my time to actually follow through with contacting and booking. Your clients are going to be the same way. And I promise as Gen Z and whatever comes after Gen Z gets older, they're going to want to be on the phone even less than millennials do. So you might as well make things easy now. Get your systems in place. With a more streamlined booking process, all you really have to do is book your makeup artist. The 10th way boudoir photography is different from other styles is how you run your ordering sessions. Now, most photographers who come to me are shoot and burn. Maybe they've done a little bit of IPS or in-person sales, but they're mostly just giving all the digitals. With boudoir though, most clients actually want albums. So you're going to need to do an ordering session with family sessions, weddings, and other types of photography. A lot of photographers are doing shoot and burn because it's easier, but it's not necessarily the most profitable. I mentioned it earlier, but with the expenses we have in boudoir, it's extra important to make sure that you're profitable. 
The best way to guarantee that you meet your sales average is with an ordering session. You can run them same day, bring your clients back a few days or a week later for an ordering session, or you can run your ordering sessions on Zoom. That's the way that I do it. The results are going to be the same. It mostly just depends on your personal situation and the way you run your business. Now, if you only get one thing from this episode, I want you to understand that you can't just say you're a boudoir photographer when you've normally shot weddings or families or whatever. A boudoir business is ran completely different than other types of photography businesses. And this really needs to be taken into consideration as you're setting up your business. The TLC Boudoir Photographers Playbook is going to guide you in creating an unbelievable and luxurious experience for your clients. This playbook lays out the entire session experience from start to finish. So you know exactly how to run yours, including pricing with a business foundation in mind, session consults, sales sessions, and more. I've even included my posing guide and icebreaker poses as well. So you're going to get instant access to 29 pages of instructional information, posing guide of 15 album selling poses, and of course my four icebreaker poses that are going to help you get your clients very comfortable very quickly. If you want access, be sure to click the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.